Number 10, Manchineal Tree. If you came to this list looking for poison ivy stats, you'll get those, but you're also gonna get some extra stuff as well. The Manchineal Tree, upon first glance, looks pretty normal. In fact, it almost looks welcoming, dare I say. The tropical tree grows a low-hanging fruit and can be found in the Caribbean, Central America, and South Florida. So you'll see this on vacation. And if you live there, don't touch this tree, okay? Ever, for that matter. And for sure, don't eat the fruit. In fact, don't even breathe in the air around this tree just to be safe. Just walk by and go. The Manchinil tree is referred to as the beach apple or na manzanilla de la morte, which translates to little apple of death. So yeah, both apples, both bad apples. The plant is riddled with toxins. Even if you put this apple in your mouth and immediately spat it out, the inside of your mouth and throat will instantly be blistered. It's not a good thing at all. It's gonna really suck. The reason it's so awful is because the tree contains a natural chemical called forbol, and it's so poisonous that if you were to stand under the tree while it was raining to avoid, you know, frizz or whatever, the water rolling off the tree would actually burn your skin on contact. Yeah, so if you're a tree hugger, skip the manchineal tree. Number nine. Arsenic. This deadly poison took out George III of England and Napoleon Bonaparte, so double trouble. You've probably heard about arsenic here on B. We've mentioned it a few times, a few tragedies involving such. Arsenic is incredibly toxin in its inorganic form, but arsenic is a natural component in the ground, so it can also cause contaminated water, which leads to arsenic poisoning, which in many cases would lead you to develop skin cancer. Yeah, it's not a good road to travel on. Arsenic has an LD50 around 13 milligrams for all you science folk out there I want to go, oh, of course. The Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has arsenic on its priority list of hazardous substances, so it's no joke. Also, that sentence was horribly hard to say. Exposure to toxic metals is still a common problem that we're facing today, so gotta talk about arsenic whenever we can. Number eight, strychnine. This one's strictly horrible. This next one could have been the reason Alexander the Great met his horrible fate. It's odorless and white. This crystalline powder was once used to treat ailments, you know, back in the day, but they also used to prescribe radiated water back in the day too, so you never really know. It's all pretty bad. Now, strychnine is used mainly as a pesticide, so we've evolved. We've gotten a little bit better. We've learned some lessons. This deadly substance naturally comes from a plant called Strychnos nux vomica, commonly found in Southern Asia and Australia. Strychnine can take down the strongest of humans. Like I said before, it killed Alexander the Great, okay? Now what happens is, after it's inhaled or ingested in any way, shape, or form, the chemical that controls nerve signals gets all messed up. It's like an off switch for your muscles. It's terrible. Your body will immediately start experiencing spasms, leading for your muscles to eventually tire out to a point where you can't can't even breathe anymore. Your neck and your back will arch uncontrollably. That sounds like the worst thing imaginable. Number seven, cone snail. From a big underwater creature to a small underwater creature. Equally as deadly, let's do it. I'm never underestimating a snail ever again. I mean, yeah, they're slow, yes, they're squishy, and yeah, sometimes they're also extremely venomous. Cone snails use hollow, teeth called redulae that are sharp enough to penetrate a wetsuit. So unless you're rocking knight's armor, going for a late night dip, you're gonna lose this deep sea tussle. The venom in just one of these mollusks is enough to kill 20 adults. I saw these little guys on planet Earth or something like that. It was so bizarre. Caught me right off guard too. So calm and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Number six, the Brazilian wandering spider. Oh God, here we go. This one's a bit different, but I had to throw it in for our halfway point here, because it's kinda, dare I say, fun in a scientific way. The Brazilian wandering spider has a bite that can give its victim um, a that lasts for hours, believe it or not. That's a real fact. This animal is also dangerous. Its bite, of course, will hurt. You'll be sweating. Blood pressure will increase, hence, you know, that side effect. They're more commonly known as banana spiders. So I guess I can't eat bananas anymore, there that goes. These little guys have been listed as the world's most venomous spiders in a handful of years in the Guinness Book of World Records. And they hide in funnel webs. It's, it's terrifying, it just looks bad. If its name didn't already tip you off, they can be found in Brazil. And there's eight different kinds of wandering spiders. And my advice, personally, avoid them all. How does that sound? Sound pretty good? Here you go. Science is quite interesting here as well. They're trying to create the next Viagra using the spider's venom. The future is here, and it's filled with spiders in some way, shape, or form. Number five, tarantula hawk wasp. What an intimidating name, my gosh. The tarantula hawk wasp, okay. These wasps, for starters, they are huge. As you could have guessed, they're, again, they look like drones just flying in to take you away. 
They have bright orange wings, long legs, their bodies reach about two inches long, which is horrible as well. They're found all over the world except Europe. So if you live there, nice, must be nice, enjoy it. Enjoy stone wobbly roads and the lack of these bugs. There you go. They love the Grand Canyon the most because it's densely populated with tarantulas. That's a horrible fact, there you go. It has one of the worst stings on the planet. Its pain was described as instantly debilitating. Bullet ant stings can last 24 hours, but these ones only last five minutes. Sounds like a better alternate, but these wasps are ranked on the highest in the pain index. Would you rather have an unimaginable pain for five minutes or just, you know, plain old awful pain for 24 hours? Which one? Comment down below. Me personally, I would do the five minutes. Get it done. Cause you know what? Either way, I'm probably gonna faint, right? Let's get over faster. Number four, blister beetles. This one sounds great. Wonder what he does. The blister beetle is chock full of cantharidin, also seen in the Spanish fly. So if you see any of these two, they're doing a heist. Get out of there. Back in the day, medical experts would actually use cantharidin to induce blisters. That was a common remedy. Just, hey, here's a blister. Hope you feel better. Let's see. These little bugs have this poison inside of them. Blister beetles are tiny and they often sport this metallic, beautiful green or blue wing cover. They look like a futuristic beetle. It's awesome. If a bird tries to eat one of these, well, stick around and watch for a bit because that beetle will come right back up and then continue on its little beetle business. On the outside, cantharidin causes a dermatitis reaction. And if you have the misfortune of swallowing one of these, well, like that sad bird in question, it could very well be your last meal. So don't be licking or eating any beetles. Back in the 1800s, people would lick them. Don't do that, don't lick beetles. We don't lick bugs here on Bumblebee. We just subscribe to them. Ah, he did it. Number three, deadly nightshade. Yes, another name that gets right to the punch. We love those. Teach us by just hearing about it, you know what I mean? Poison ivy, deadly nightshade. Okay, I know to stay away. Deadly nightshade, AKA Atropa belladonna, is another poisonous plant that Macbeth soldiers used to poison their enemies. The thing that makes deadly nightshade so commonly known is the sweetness of the berries. Have you ever been outside, you've seen a berry, and like 30% of you wants to eat that berry? Don't do that. Curiosity kills, my friend, at least when it comes to the deadly nightshade. 10 berries, that's all it takes and then you're a goner, that's it. Even a single leaf. The plant can commonly be found in Europe, Asia, and Africa, and it grows purple flowers in groups of threes, along with those not so lovely purple berries. So anything purple, just let it purple. Number two, ricin. One of the biggest villains in Breaking Bad. We remember this guy, he's bad. He's a, he's a bad man pajama. Ricin is a chemical found in the seeds of castor oil plants. Now it looks alarmingly similar to table salt. That's where the real trouble comes in. That's why I'm trying to educate. And also an extremely small amount can kill an adult human being. And they also come from castor beans, but unlike toxic plants, you aren't going to run into any of ricin in the wild. There's more steps that need to be done before you, you know, accidentally poison yourself in minutes. Once consumed, ricin enters your cells and then prevents them from making the proteins that they need. Subsequently, killing you. So your cells die and they die fast. Now, depending on if you inhale it, ingest it, or inject it, the results may vary. And by results, I mean it depends how long it'll take before you meet your horrible fate. Georgie Markov, he got taken out by a ricin attack. It was 1978, he was waiting for a bus and a man in a black umbrella, or rather an air dart device designed as an umbrella, shot at his right thigh. It was like, and then it wasn't until three days later that that little sting contaminated trace amounts of ricin and then that was it. And finally, number one, a blue ringed octopus. Don't do that. Do not do what you just saw. Do not pick up a small blue ringed octopus or any octopus for that matter, just to be safe. The blue ringed octopus is commonly found in coastal waters of Australia and Japan. And sometimes they're not even in the water. Sometimes they're in the influencers palm just waiting, just being filmed, just in the air. Now in the water, they're great at getting around. They use their tentacles to walk along the ocean floor. They're fascinating, they're fast, they're alien, and they can move into small crevices that you won't even see them. And ideally, that's where you want them to stay. Out of sight, out of mind, and in the ocean, not in the palm of your hand. They're dazzling, but they sure are deadly. The blue ring octopus is lethal enough to take out 26 adults. 
yeah, they pack quite the punch, even though they're little, little guys. They're filled with two different types of venom. The first can kill their prey, and the other can be used as a defense. Either way, this encounter is bad news, not something you want to experience. They don't get very large, so keep an eye out, you know? Watch for those little crevices. Wear water shoes, don't touch anything, and hit subscribe. Those are the three rules you gotta follow right there if you ever wanna explore safely. Number 10, golden toads. Don't let its little hands and tiny, cute smile fool you. The golden toad, this guy's pure trouble. Or rather, the alkaloid is on their skin. That's extremely toxic. Either way, you're gonna wanna avoid catching these guys if you're catching frogs one weekend in the you know, humid forests of Colombia. Otherwise, the batrachotoxin will interfere with your sodium ion levels in your nerves, resulting in your heart ultimately failing. Yeah, you thought you caught a toad. Meanwhile, you caught death right there in the palm of your hands. Their skin glands can produce this deadly toxin as a self-defense mechanism, so all the more reason to avoid this guy. Humans just produce sweat. How lame is that in comparison to this on-the-spot superpower? Imagine every time you go for a run, you sweat acid or toxins. That'd be lovely. Number nine, the giant Japanese hornet. Measuring two to three inches, that's like a small drone, that is horrible. This hornet carries a toxin that often leads to paralysis, kidney failure, and sometimes even death. And it's not a quick one either. That's the worst part here. It's gonna take a while. If you're in Asia for a vacation, keep your heads up, honestly. I mean, you're gonna see them coming because they're massive and disgusting, but look extra hard, you know what I mean? Remember when those hornets were a big scare back during the 2020 scare? On the news, they're like, hey, you're worried about this, but check this out. Killer hornets, they also might be a thing. Stay tuned. I'm glad that went away. Number eight, box jellyfish. Let's go under the sea for this one, shall we? We talked about blue ring octopus, octopi, whatever, in part one. These box jellyfish here, also not wise to touch. I would recommend staying far away. Australian box jellyfish have plenty of venom. It's super deadly, as all these are. I don't have to mention that, I guess. These are aliens, really. Jellyfish look so alien underwater. They're practically transparent in the ocean, and its tentacles can sting you with its, you know, millions of nematocysts. Peeing on your leg also won't solve this problem, sadly. I know, you probably got excited. You're like, can I just, you know? Eh? No, you can't. Australian boxfish carries toxins that cause extreme pain, paralysis, delirium, cardiac arrest, and even, yep, death. All within five minutes. Yeah, you wouldn't even be able to get your goggles off, and then that's it, it's game over. One jellyfish has enough venom to kill 60 adults, so, unless there's 61 of you going swimming, I'd avoid this. Number seven, poison oak. I met this one last summer. Yeah, while I was running through a, through a trail. My ankles just absolutely got destroyed by this guy. So I had to throw it in. We should all know more. Poison Ivy, we know about. We're all good there. You know, leaves of three, let it be. It's catchy, we remember that one. Poison Oak, on the other hand, is so much worse. These plants produce a harmful oil called urushi oil, and the rash that follows after you make direct contact is called contact dermatitis. So, it sucks. It feels very horrible. Poison ivy is known for its leaves. Each one has three tips. You know, we've heard about that. Poison oak, same thing, but it's got fuzz on the underside, and it has a lighter top on the thing. So, poison oak, a fuzzy bloke. There we go. Now it rhymes, now you'll remember, and now we're gonna have a great autumn together and not touch any fuzzy leaves. If, yeah, any fuzzy leaves. Don't don't touch it. Number six, the cow killer. If you've seen a hairy red and black bug of any kind, don't touch it. There we go, we're learning today. The Eastern Velvet Ant, AKA the cow killer, isn't actually an ant, despite what its name thinks. It's actually a wasp. The female is wingless, so that's why we think it's an ant, but don't let that get to your head. She'll still find you. She'll still hunt you down, even without wings. Her sting is extremely painful. She doesn't get along well with her own type. That's how bad she is. These cow killers are usually found riding solo rather than nesting with hundreds of others. Here's the most evil thing about this wasp, ant, hairy creature from hell, whatever you want to call it. It's a parasite to bumblebees, which here on Bumblebee we say, nope, we don't like that. Humans are trying to save the bees. Meanwhile, these females are laying eggs in beehives in order for the wasp to be born and then immediately have it all you can eat breakfast. Yeah, they're horrible. They like to plan. They just throw in one like a Trojan horse wasp. If you have the misfortune of stepping on a cow killer, two things are probably gonna happen here. One, a pheromone is released on impact. Now this calls the colony to then attack. And then the venom is released from their saliva which is, you know, it's bad, and then it gets so much worse. That's gonna not feel great. Number five, the kissing bug. 
Now I know it sounds friendly, maybe a little too friendly, but this kissing bug is no lover. No, it's actually quite the opposite. These small smoochin' bugs carry with them a plethora of diseases, one of which is called the Chagas disease. Also known as triatomine bugs, kissing bugs are known to suck blood out of human beings. Yeah, like little vampires. We're pretty on the ball when it comes to mosquitoes or ticks, that kind of stuff, but these ones, they suck a lot more. We're still keeping our eye out for these guys. They usually bite you near the mouth, Hence their fun nickname, the kissing bug. They give you a little, little smooch and then you're ow. It carries with them the Trypanosoma cruzi parasite. And after a quick smooch, that parasite will now belong to you. There you go, pass it on, have fun. The bugs also fart in your eye. They release a gas while they do this, so double horrible. We should have named these guys the stink bug after that fact, it's pretty gross. Number four. Yellow boxfish. These guys are a species of boxfish that can be found in the reef throughout the Pacific Ocean and in the Indian Ocean, as well as the southeastern, as well as the southeastern Atlantic Ocean, and but to be honest, they're pretty much everywhere. And they aren't necessarily the most poisonous fish on this list, but its method of poisoning you can be a cause for concern. So we have to mention it. When threatened, these guys release their poison, which is called tetrodotoxin, which you now hopefully know about and you'll never forget ever again. The release is less than strategic. There is essentially no aim and they just shoot it out and then they swim away and hope for the best. And more often than not, it works because any of this belonging to you is horrible. It's kind of hilarious, really. They just spray and then pray and then they run away. It actually causes a lot of accidental poisonings as well to both humans and other fish. So they're really hard to study because, you know, obviously they'll just be like, huh, and then run away. And then we're like, huh, and we faint. Number three, Black Widow. Ooh, we've all heard about this one, but just how bad is her bite? The Black Widow is not only extremely painful, but it's incredibly toxic, obviously. At first, you may not even feel anything that bizarre. You may think you were bit by a mosquito, something tame, there's slight irritation of the skin at first, nothing too bad, but an hour goes by, oh, much, much worse. You'll be disoriented, dizzy, nauseous, your breathing will become very difficult, other words that start with the letter D, all because of one little one little bite. Male black widows, they're much smaller and they contain much less venom than that of the female. A fact you may have heard already about the spider that you probably have locked and loaded in your head is that the female black widow actually begins eating the male while they're getting it on. Yeah, that's brutal. Top 10 ways to spice up your spider marriage. There we go, you won't believe number four, unreal. If you do get bit, just take it slow and breathe because we actually do have an anti-venom for this one. Number two. Comb stars. We do not have an antidote for this one. I'll tell you that right off the bat. We had a nice happy ending with the third one, pun intended, but now this one's not that fun. Ocean life is by far the scariest thing out there. We have no idea how deep our oceans go, what's in them. I, I, I personally vote aliens, but we discover crazy new fish species every single year. I just click refresh and I'm like, oh, look at these aliens. On one hand, it's fascinating. We discover deep sea fish with bioluminescence that we never thought even existed until now. But we've also discovered new natural predators, like the comb star, for example. He's new, he's the new bully on the block. A starfish that contains tetrodoxin. Yeah, that classic toxin. Everyone loves that one, there we go. This deadly neurotoxin can again cause paralysis. For every gram of comb star flesh, there's enough toxin to take out 500 mice. That's a lot of mice. That's a lot of Stuart Little extras just biting the bullet just because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And finally, number one, Arianite. Yeah, we'll finish off with tiny crystals that you might accidentally inhale. That's terrifying. That's a new fear. Let's talk about it. What a way to finish part two. Arianite in its natural form is fascinating, as most of these crystals are, right? It's this fiber almost. It's a thin mineral that if touched will immediately break apart into tiny pieces that you can <gasps> inhale. First of all, that's not gonna feel good. If you ever had glass stuck in your hand, this is already gonna feel worse, just stuck in your hand, it's horrible. Arianite is part of a group of minerals called zeolites, and they're these hollow minerals with hairy insides almost. It looks fuzzy, but it's, I can guarantee you it's not, it is not fuzzy. Exposure to these can cause lung cancer, but luckily arianite mining stopped back in the 80s, but that doesn't mean miners are necessarily off the hook. Even when mining other zeolites, this deadly mineral can still be present and attack. It was discovered in 1898, but it wasn't until the 1970s where the Turkish government found out that it was actually lethal. So that whole time, miners were just <gasps> inhaling poison. They did a study on why there was so much mesothelioma in the lungs of villagers in the mountainous region. And this is the answer. This mineral was the cause for 43% of those deaths. The death rate for asbestos installers was around a 9.7%, just to give you a little you know, idea. 